Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, we welcome you on this virtual event with uh, us today. Uh, you can actually see two new faces here and uh, also me. Uh, and uh, we will start this uh, presentation, let's say, in two, three minutes because we know what always some latecomers uh, will join uh, later on. So give uh, us uh, two minutes, let's wait, and then we will start officially. Thank you for understanding. And meanwhile, you can confirm in the chat box uh, what do you hear us properly and uh, everything works fine. Thanks. Thanks, Tim, for confirmation. Yes, definitely. Go, everyone, for a uh, cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink. And I uh, will start in two minutes. Anyway, if you will have any particular questions or issues you would like us to focus on, or better to say my colleagues to focus on, uh, feel free to uh, write them uh, even uh, now to the chat uh, so that you guys can uh, look on that and work with that. Yes. And all your questions, meanwhile, feel free to write there. There will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation, so uh, don't worry, we'll uh, get to all the questions that uh, you might might raise. Uh, but sure, yeah, let's, uh, let's use the time that we wait for the latecomers uh, and uh, we'll be ready to answer any questions right now if you have. Actually, I think we will start soon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, two minutes passed, <laughs> so it's time to start. So I will uh, make uh, just for the purpose of recording the uh, welcome again. Hello everyone, welcome to Wellbone webinar. Uh, this webinar is for customers and users uh, of Wellbone, and we are going to uh, announce a couple of uh, interesting news uh, from both business and technical perspective. I am uh, Peter Sokenik, and I uh, used to be responsible for Wellbone Peacemaker up to end of last uh, November. And since that, I was passing uh, all our responsibility for uh, English speaking customers uh, to my colleague Lorenzo, who is here. And I would like to introduce uh, him to you. And also, uh, there have been some changes in the technical team. And uh, you have already experienced uh, communicating to our colleague Adam Mierka who is the uh, technical consultant lead for uh, Wellbone Peacemaker and who is going to make a presentation of the technical part today. So what we are going to do is uh, we want to explain you the changes that have happened and uh, what are the uh, next plans. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, differentiate uh, roles in the company and I have moved to a different position. And uh, Lorenzo will be responsible for all the business uh, and non-technical matters with you. So feel free to uh, communicate with him and uh, he is uh, ready to help with everything. And uh, Adam uh, is uh, dedicated to a peacemaker and he is uh, absolutely a great fit for your needs. So uh, then he's uh, great uh, for the business, uh, for the technical stuff. And you can uh, reach him uh, by contacting us at support at wellbone.io. And we also expect another new colleague who is uh, going to be responsible primarily for Czech and Slovak markets. But uh, he is uh, going to be a sales representative, but with uh, broad technical knowledge. So he will uh, he will uh, make the uh, sales team and the like non technical consultant team uh, stronger with the technical uh, technical field. I would like to also mention a couple of uh, highlights from the last uh, couple of months. Uh, and uh, the most current one that we have expanded to a couple of new territories. We have uh, here uh, new customers from Philippines with us uh, today, and also a new partner uh, from Philippines, who is a total information management company. And we work uh, in Philippines uh, together. 
and we have also customers from Italy or Kenya uh, for the last couple of weeks who joined the Wellbone. And we made quite nice uh, presentation uh, with our partner uh, from Czech Republic uh, in Latin America. And uh, we are actually preparing uh, quite nice, nice announcement about the uh, very important player in India. What is also very interesting to mention is uh, the ns eu project. Uh, some of uh, you uh, are from European uh, region and uh, you are maybe aware of the fact that the uh, uh, European Commission has uh, uh, announced the call for, call for proposals called the dns for eu and the purpose of that is to build up a European uh, DNS resolver, something like Google or Cloudflare, but with the uh, European uh, data privacy, privacy laws uh, and the respection to them and uh, also with some cyber security and Railbone is working on consortium all together with other partners, such as, for example, government of Bulgaria uh, to uh, make a bid for this, uh, for this uh, project. And actually I'm res personally responsible for that. Some of them, uh, some of you who are here has uh, given you uh, your support to us uh, by signing the letter of support. So thank you a lot uh, for that. And actually, uh, as I will be responsible for DNS for EU, maybe we will meet uh, once again uh, based on that. But uh, now is a great uh, time to ask Lorenzo to take uh, over the presentation and uh, to uh, introduce himself. So Lorenzo, go ahead. Hi everyone, it's great to see you there. Um, thank you, Petra, for the introduction. Um, it's my great pleasure to be part of the team and to be part of the Peacemaker family. Um, regarding our partnership, I want also to mention uh, the existing partnership with Motivi.eu, uh, which we are really happy uh, about it. And um, just to mention, a couple of weeks ago, um, I've been in uh, Colombia, uh, attending the American Expo uh, with them. And we have many interesting contacts in the uh, South American market, but not only. And we are um, sure that with, with, with a bit of commitment and hard work, we can extend our customer base even more. Um, that being said, uh, I want to also mention that um, we work for you. Um, this means that uh, feel free to get in touch with me, even if I am not a technical guy, uh, because we strive to give our customer the best services we can. So any feedback from your side is relevant and each of you is uh, important for us. Um, before uh, giving the floor to Adam, I want to mention how I ended up in Wilbon. Um, it's a cool story and everything started in 2019 when I was still a student. And on the left, you can see Andronikos. Maybe some of you know him already. Uh, he is our tech consulting head. And I want to show you this picture because even though Whaleborn is growing, uh, let's say, really fast, um, from this side, it's really nice to work here because the environment is good. Uh, our management always try to push us to do the better we can, and they give us a lot of trust. And from my side, a uh, lot of good things happened since I joined the company, and I'm happy to be here, and I will try to uh, do the best I can. Uh, this is all uh, from my side. Uh, the main point of this uh, webinar is to show you our uh, technical updates, uh, what we are working with, and, and what we have for you. So I give the floor to Adam. Uh, and yeah. All right. Thanks, Lorenzo, for the beautiful introduction. Now uh, let's get to the agenda and to the new features that you've been all waiting for. Uh, so uh, there are about six points that we would like to talk about today. First is the new in uh, integration with Zabbix, the SNMP monitoring tool. Uh, secondly, there are some updates to the content dashboard uh, that you might already have seen or uh, noticed in your uh, regular operation 
while working with uh, the content filtering dashboard. Uh, thirdly, there's the uh, updated resolver statistics. Again, uh, something which is quite new since uh, the last webinar that we had. Uh, although it has been in the Peacemaker for quite some time now, I think about two months. So uh, some of you might not already or might not perceive it as a news, uh, but it, uh, it is uh, since the last webinar. Uh, then uh, we will show you a sneak peek of the new DNS resolution settings that will be available uh, later this year, uh, hopefully in the second quarter of 2022. Uh, this uh, makes use of some uh, familiar firewall settings that you know from, from other solutions. We try to copy that and make that uh, make, make our current DNS resolution settings better. Uh, and uh, lastly, we will uh, look at uh, some other features that are uh, scheduled in the next release for uh, Will Home Peacemaker. Right. So let's get to it. Uh, Zabex, it is a favorite monitoring tool of uh, many companies. Maybe some of you are already using it as well. Uh, we've prepared a uh, integration with Whalebone. Uh, that means that we have prepared some templates that you can uh, import into Zabex and watch the statistics uh, that the resolver collects uh, without visiting the uh, Whalebone portal. Uh, so if your teams uh, are operating uh, some security operational center or some network operational center where uh, they uh, watch Zabbix, uh, it might be quite uncomfortable for them to get used to the new tool uh, and have to monitor that as well. So we've made it easy for our types uh, of customers that use this feature to uh, take advantage of that. So for those of you who don't know how that works and might be interested in integrating it, uh, basically, uh, on the resolver, we are able to run an agent either uh, on the VM itself or we are able to run it as a container uh, in Docker, uh, meaning that it will be uh, a similar service uh, to all of the others that are running or uh, that are comprising the Wellbo Peacemaker solution. This agent reports uh, the uh, data that it reads locally to the Zabbix server uh, where there are some visualization capabilities uh, and where the templates and dashboards are actually stored uh, and viewable by, by the administrators. So what it does is the agent reads the uh, local logs, the statistics that uh, the resolver provides and simply sends them to the Zabbix server. Uh, the logic is quite simple and we will be happy to help you with uh, the integration if you choose to deploy it. Uh, we've made some uh, great guides to uh, help you with this uh, by setting this up yourselves. Uh, however, our support uh, extends to um, setting this up as well. However, we will not be able to support the uh, Zabbix in uh, full scale because it is not our technology. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so that's it. Uh, so, if you're interested, uh, reach out to us on support. Uh, we'll be happy to provide the templates and the guides and also uh, run the container uh, on the resolver itself. We're able to do that uh, remotely uh, without you having to uh, prepare the configuration for the VM itself. Right, uh, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them. Uh, we will answer them in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. Uh, next up, the content dashboard. Uh, those of you who are uh, taking advantage of the content filtering feature of Will One Piece Maker might have noticed that it doesn't work as expected, uh, or it didn't work as expected uh, in some cases in the past. Uh, which uh, we've already fixed uh, since uh, this is quite new since about two weeks ago we figured out how to uh, make the click house uh, work for us and not time out on uh, large queries uh, so the uh, the problem that occurred uh, in some cases was that whenever uh, we sent a query to the click house which uh, m made uh, or was was quite uh, quite demanding uh, in the number of data that it uh, processed. It made the dashboard to um, crash. Uh, you got an error uh, warning you that something went wrong. It was not very specific. 
uh, and you were left with uh, just some partially loaded data in the, uh, the timeline uh, and the pie charts did not load in many cases. So this has already been fixed. Uh, I can actually uh, show you uh, the, the dashboard itself and uh, the data that it presents if I figure out how to uh, share my screen. Right. Uh, you should now see the uh, Will Moon portal. This is yeah. our uh, demo client number three. Uh, so if I click through here uh, and load, or let's say switch from DNS traffic to content filtering, uh, it will load for quite some time. Uh, you can see that the timeline is already loaded. Uh, we have some legal blockings here, uh, nothing major, but the um, uh, all the other graphs are loaded as well, uh, including the, uh, the filtering, which is also uh, available in the content dashboard, uh, meaning that I can filter for a specific IP or uh, a second level domain, just as you're used to from uh, all the other dashboards. Right. Are we back to the presentation? Can you see the, the slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Right. Uh, so uh, some other news from the uh, content dashboard. Uh, we've introduced a new regulatory source for the Czech Republic. Uh, this is from the State uh, Bureau for Drug Control, uh, where uh, recently we have passed some law here in the Czech Republic that uh, prevented proprietors of these illegal pharmacies to distribute uh, basically uh, on uh, Un unregulated medicine or sometimes some dangerous uh, preparates that were not even uh, did not provide any health benefits. So uh, our uh, Ministry of Health decided to regulate this and we were able to uh, adapt to this quite flexibly. Uh, I think that the, our perfect development team has managed to uh, integrate this in under one day uh, after the announcement. So that was uh, quite a big success, and this is, um, uh, or th this demonstrates that uh, we're able to do this for uh, your countries and your regulations as well. So, if, for example, in the Philippines, uh, there is a new law, we're able to adapt to it quite flexibly. Uh, some new uh, upcoming features to the content dashboard that are not yet available, but will be uh, some sometime later this year are new categories to block. Uh, specifically, they're the dynamic DNS, uh, anonymizers, and new domains. So you might know the uh, dynamic DNS sites. Um, some, some examples of that are the uh, OpenDNS or myip.com, uh, which are uh, are providing some, some anonymity to the users. And in some cases, they might be unwanted, uh, meaning uh, you might want to decide that you don't, do not want them uh, in your network or for a specific segment of your network, so we will be able to block them. Uh, anonymizers are self-explanatory. And the new domains, uh, this is a category of uh, domains that have been recently registered. Uh, they are often uh, associated with uh, threats. Uh, attackers use uh, newly registered domains for their DDoS attacks and spam attacks. This is a bit related to threats, however, not entirely. So that's why we've decided to um, introduce it as a new content category. Uh, and uh, you will be able to block that as well. Uh, regarding the resolver statistics, uh, I think this is something you have uh, surely already noticed uh, in the uh, resolvers dashboard, in the uh, resolver detail, you are now able to see some additional graphs uh, with network statistics and uh, disk IO operations. Uh, previously, you can see the graph on the left. Uh, this is what it looked like before. We had the uh, um, memory and disk usage uh, separated. Now it's squished together into one graph uh, and they, we've also made them a little bit smaller uh, so that more data fits on the on the screen. 
Uh, right, so this is just some uh, convenience feature for your admins uh, and for the people who are taking care of the underlying VM, its health and uh, monitoring. Uh, so in, in case that there is some problem on the network or some problem with the hard drives, uh, you might see an indication in the graphs here. And also it's possible to set up alerts, right? Uh, yes, yes, the, that is uh, that has always been the case. Uh, we have uh, the alerts uh, prepared and uh, you can take advantage of them at any time you want. There is some uh, hardware performance monitoring, meaning that if the CPU usage uh, reaches some critical load or threshold, let's say uh, 90%, uh, you are able to get alerted about that. And we support uh, four channels. Uh, email, uh, syslog, uh, secure syslog via TLS. And uh, we're also able to send these alerts to your Slack if your company uses that. So uh, this, this is again something quite convenient. Uh, regarding the new DNS firewall, I have prepared a small demo and uh, I'll first talk a little bit about it. So the old UI was quite confusing. Uh, we uh, had these uh, options to uh, set up some forwarding uh, to, to other DNS servers. Uh, we had the option to set static hints. Uh, however, uh, this was quite confusing because it didn't quite explain the, the way that the underlying mechanisms of uh, not resolver worked and what configuration was actually applied to it. Uh, unless you looked uh, directly on the VM and uh, downloaded the uh, not resolver configuration file, you were uh, not able to see uh, what directives uh, were being used and uh, we're trying to uh, improve that and make this better. So uh, the new UI will utilize a set of rules uh, similarly to uh, your favorite firewall solutions where you just uh, specify uh, a sequence of rules which are being applied to the uh, traffic uh, and in a sequential order uh, the rules will uh, be applied to uh, the traffic according to the filters. Uh, so I will try to present the screen again. And uh, we will see how it works. So here I have the development version of our new portal with this uh, new DNS resolution settings. Uh, and the core is the same. Basically, you can see uh, or you can configure as many policies as you want. But uh, the, the major change here is uh, these, uh, these rule sets. So let me demonstrate. Uh, let's say that you want to uh, prepare a rule which forwards any traffic from a specific IP range. Uh, let's say that you have some people who are late on their payments or are, are defaulting, uh, and you want to inform them that unless they pay, they will not be able to uh, use your service and use the internet. So I will make a rule for that. Uh, let's say uh, redirect defaulters. And let's say I know that uh, the customers that are not paying, uh, I'm manually uh, assigning them some IP range, let's say some 10.30.40.1. And I can also specify some uh, classless uh, range. Uh, so let's put 24 here. Uh, and uh, I'll make a rule for any query type uh, for all queries. Uh, and I will say that the action for these queries will be to forward them, or let's say forward without DNSSEC validation, to some IP where I have my custom blocking page. Uh, you might either create a, a blocking page in the Whalebone uh, UI itself, or you can spin up some of your uh, custom web servers, uh, or maybe you have a, a page on your uh, on your existing website, uh, and let's say that I want to um, redirect them to this IP. Right, uh, where they will be informed that uh, unless they pay, they will not be able to access Facebook and uh, Google and all of their uh, favorite domains. So this is just one example of uh, the settings that you are able to achieve with this. 
uh, some other settings uh, might include uh, forwarding to Active Directory uh, name servers or some other, other domain controllers, which will be responsible for maintaining internal records of uh, your zone or of the domain that you have control of. Uh, some other um, examples might be uh, the flags that we are uh, providing here. So you're able to disable caching of a specific domain, meaning that uh, the requests for these domains will never be uh, stored on the, resolver, uh, on the resolver's cache and will, will always be uh, uh, done in a full recursion uh, so that the resolver will always need to find out uh, from the authoritative name, name servers uh, what the actual IP is. Uh, we also have some uh, flags for uh, queue name minimization. This means that uh, uh, this is a uh, privacy-related uh, feature that resolvers are uh, implementing more and more nowadays, uh, meaning that the uh, name servers don't need to know the full query itself, uh, but only the subquery which they are responsible for. So let's say if I ask for drive.google.com, then the root server doesn't need to know that, uh, that I'm asking for drive. It only needs to know that I'm looking for something on the com domain. Uh, and so it will uh, perform the recursion. And then Google uh, name servers again, or sorry, the, the com uh, name servers don't need to know that I'm looking for drive.google.com. They just need to know that I'm looking for google.com and forward me uh, or then, then tell me the answer. So that's the queue name minimization. Uh, you can also advertise this to your users as a privacy feature. Uh, some of them might care about that and it might give you a competitive edge uh, over your competition. And lastly, uh, there is a flag for case randomization. Uh, so this is, uh, some name servers might have problems with this. Uh, however, it is not commonly the case. The main usage for this is to mitigate DNS tunneling. Uh, however, uh, or uh, we do this by default for all, all queries because uh, the DNS protocol is independent of the case. However, there might be some uh, use cases where you need to reserve the uh, uppercase or lo lowercase of the query. So we are able to do that here in the uh, rules settings. Uh, the rest of the uh, DNS re resolution settings uh, will remain the same. We still have the static records that you're able to assign. And we also have the space for some advanced DNS configuration here. So uh, any custom functions, custom scripts, uh, RPZ uh, uh, modifications, you're able to do this here. All right, back to the presentation. Uh, that was just a short demo. Uh, again, uh, we do not have an exact ETA on this feature, uh, but I hope that uh, Q's second of this year uh, will be the time that we release this. And lastly, uh, probably the thing you're looking forward uh, the most is the new resolver release. So let me tell you about what we're planning, uh, what will be the new features uh, and fixes in the uh, coming version. So the major one is the new base version of Not Resolver. Currently, we're running on Not Resolver 5.5.0, uh, and as soon as CZNIC releases the, the new one, we uh, will implement that into our feature as well. Uh, the other thing uh, touches on, again, some uh, privacy concerns, and that's the uh, DNS over HTTPS and TLS capability. So right now, we our resolvers uh, are supporting this. However, the major drawback is that you are not able to see this kind of traffic in the dashboard. So whenever a client is uh, communicating with the, the resolver in a uh, encrypted way, uh, you are not able to see that in the uh, in the DNS traffic dashboard or in the logs themselves because it doesn't pass through one of the components that. Uh, is actually sniffing the traffic and presenting or storing that in form of logs. So this will be subject to change as of the next release. Uh, the, there will be some, some restructuring of the components. We will leave the passive DNS component uh, or the service and replace it with something called DNS tap. 
uh, which has some advanced capabilities and it will help us uh, with this problem as well. So we will able you will be able to uh, see the DOT traffic as well. Uh, next up, uh, we are uh, we will be uh, collecting the Docker stats on the VM. Uh, so this is good for uh, some performance troubleshooting because uh, right now the only monitoring that we do is on the underlying underlying VM itself, uh, meaning that we're not able to differentiate between uh, what service is actually responsible for uh, some increased CPU load or for some increased uh, RAM consumption. Uh, as soon as this is deployed, we will be able to see uh, if uh, some of our services, uh, some of our services are uh, responsible for, for that increased load and we will see this uh, consistently and uh, we will be able to re recollect this back in time uh, to, to uh, associate this with some, let's say, incident or some, uh, some issue on the resolver or maybe some increased in the per DNS performance, uh, sorry, uh, in the DNS traffic. Uh, which might be an indication of a DDoS attack and stuff like that. So this will uh, be, be uh, some, again, uh, something more convenient for your uh, admins uh, who will be able to uh, look at this data, data and uh, identify the problem with more precision. Uh, next point, uh, there will be some performance improvements uh, on the uh, base version of not resolver, so the DNS queries will be uh, recursed uh, faster. Uh, be that this is due to some uh, new algorithms uh, that uh, CZ.NIC is uh, implementing in in the base not resolver, and we, there also will be some minor fixes uh, on the on the not resolver itself. Uh, so the the screenshot that you can see, uh, or the the snippet from uh, from the command line, is the Docker stats, which will show you how uh, much RAM and CPU are uh, each of the services consuming. Uh, so this will be uh, again collected in uh, the matrix uh, of the resolver, and you will also be able to see this in the Zabbix if you choose to integrate it. And yeah, we've blazed through it uh, quite quickly, uh, faster than I expected, and we're at the end. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to ask them uh, and let me know. Yeah, we have a question. All right, so when did the cloud... Sorry, <laughs> can I read it? Uh, yeah, for sure. All right, so Tim Porter asks, uh, when the cloud-hosted block page is displayed, there is a usually a certificate error in the browser uh, that the domain entered, say xxxcasino.com, does not match the ssl.wellbone.com example. Uh, is there a recommended workaround for this? In many cases, we find customers never actually see the blocking page, only the browser error. Right, uh, I understand uh, this problem and it is something that we see quite a lot. However, uh, due to the implementation of the browser protocols and these warnings that they present to the user, uh, there is no easy way around it. Uh, we are able to generate a certificate uh, for our blocking page on the fly. This is all, again a new feature. However, the major problem with this is that uh, there is no way for you as an ISP to uh, force the client to trust this certificate. You would need to do this in advance. Uh, so let's say um, you generate a certificate uh, and you need to get that on the user machine somehow. Uh, in corporate settings, they're able to achieve this by uh, group policy. Uh, they're able to push these certificates to all the PCs in their domain or under their control, and these users do not have that problem. So if you were able to uh, convince your customers to install this certificate, uh, which you might generate yourself, uh, it's no problem at all, then it would be possible and the, the uh, the end user would be able to see the blocking page directly uh, upon first try without the browser uh, without the browser warning. However, uh, in our uh, experience, uh, the end users are uh, not that willing to uh, install some uh, recommendations from their ISP, so this will be difficult. 
there is some ongoing uh, discussion with the IETF task force to uh, somehow uh, uh, go around this. Uh, however, it is uh, in the early stages and uh, only as a proposal. I might find you some, some details and send it to Tim if you're interested in that and how the uh, discussion is going. All right, any other questions? Uh, feel free, don't be shy. We have a lot of time. They don't even need to be uh, from the technical side. Uh, you might have some some answers, uh, or so, sorry, some questions uh, towards Lorenzo and uh, stuff from, from the sales side. All right, uh, Carlos asks, is there uh, a logs on the server that we can trace users behind NAT that able to do some child pornography activity? Uh, the short answer, I think, is no, uh, if I understand it correctly. Uh, so let me tell you how, how it works, and then maybe you can correct me if, if I understood it wrong or if there's some, something else you asked for. So the uh, component that logs the uh, traffic on the resolver itself is the passive DNS. And that is uh, basically sniffing whatever uh, packets come to the resolver, uh, filters for DNS queries, and stores that in the log. Uh, if the, uh, if uh, there is some information uh, about the, the NAT and the IP address that it was uh, originally asking for the query, uh, you uh, will be theoretically able to, uh, to dig that up. However, we're not parsing that. Uh, we're only parsing the uh, final IP that, uh, on behalf of which the, the query is uh, is asked. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and with this query, you will also be able to see the, the domain uh, that the user is asking for, uh, and uh, maybe identify the the user behind that. However, if the NAT is not transparent, uh, meaning that uh, whatever device or appliance is performing the NAT and is only sending its IP address without the user's IP address, then uh, I'm afraid there's no way to, to uh, perform this identification of the end user behind that. All right, happy to help. All right, maybe my question towards uh, all of you, uh, is there any feature or uh, change that you would like to see uh, us implement uh, that we've not talked about here? Uh, is there something you're missing either uh, from the Wellbone Peacemaker or something that you would like to be added? Uh, we will collect this feedback and uh, talk with, the, with the, our development team about this, and see whether we can squeeze this in uh, into some of our later uh, or upcoming releases. Yeah, you can also feel free to reach me anytime you want. And if you have any feedbacks regarding uh, the new features you would like to have, I am always there to uh, take care of it and inform our technical team and we will work on it. All right, well, if there are no more questions, I think it's uh, safe for us to wrap this up uh, and uh, meet in, in a few months when we will uh, do this webinar again. Uh, what do you think, Lorenzo? Yeah, yeah, good for me. Right, so uh, I hope you're glad that we saved 20 minutes of your time and I hope we've not made you angry by finishing earlier. Uh, in any case, let us know. Uh, and with that, I think uh, I, I will wrap it up. Uh, thank you all for attending. It was nice to meeting you all. 
Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you either on support uh, or via email or any other channel that you choose. Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you a lot. lot.